being now a gas producing. Karen McKechnie reporting. Anyone who's had a stroke or seen a family member affected by one will know that it can be devastating, sometimes fatal. The peak body representing stroke victims in Australia says many people aren't getting the right treatment in time, while rehabilitation can be patchy. But scientists at the Queensland Brain Institute have made an important discovery that could be another step towards smoothing the road to recovery. Karen Berkman reports. The infinite possibilities of the human brain begin before a baby's born and develop rapidly as he or she starts to learn about the world. The infant's brain cells are described as plastic, still able to be assigned to the tasks of a lifetime. Now it's known that adult brains can also produce new cells and teach them to take over from those that have been damaged. It's only been 30 years since we first learnt that the adult brain was plastic. We knew that the, the developing brain was very plastic, but yeah, up until three decades ago we thought the adult brain was fixed, or hardwired as it was often called. For Australians, one of the biggest threats to brain health is stroke. 60,000 people will have a stroke this year. Some will be left with brain damage, many will die. A stroke doesn't have the recognition in Australia, both in the community and within government policy, that it really deserves as Australia's second leading cause of death. We'll just put this on your head. Now, scientists at the University of Queensland have made a discovery that could improve the rehabilitation of everyone who has a stroke. After experiments on 50 healthy volunteers, they've confirmed that conscious attention is important in moulding a stroke patient's recovery. We think attention is, is a potent modulator of brain plasticity. So when people are able to allocate their attention to a task that they're doing, that is uh, a way of enhancing the plasticity. Uh, when attention is, is moved away from a task, um, uh, in, when a person is distracted, for example, we see the amount of brain plasticity is, is strongly reduced in the brain. Using a picture of the subject MRI scan, scientists find the place that controls the fingers of the left hand. When they stimulate that spot with a magnetic pulse, the fingers move, just like they would when driven by a thought. So the magnetic pulse passes through the scalp and scalp painlessly, and it causes a small electrical charge in the brain, and that makes neurons fire um, in very much the way they would if Amy went to move her hand on her own. While the scientist applies the magnetic pulse, Amy is doing a puzzle. First, counting the number of red crosses as they flash up in a sequence. Then a more difficult task, counting the number of upright yellow and inverted green crosses. So we found that, that when our subjects were doing the, the difficult attention task, uh, the amount of plasticity that we were able to measure in the motor parts of their brain was reduced. Scientists were alerted to this possibility by an unusual group of stroke patients who process only half of what they see. They neglect their affected side and everything they encounter on that side. It's, it's like the left side of their world has, has just ceased to exist. So, for example, if they're eating a meal, they might eat food from the right side of the plate and they'll neglect everything to the left side. If they're trying to tell the time on an analogue clock face, they'll see the numbers on the right, but they'll miss the numbers to the left. These neglect patients are uh, very slow in recovering from the motor impairments. And we think the reason they're so slow in recovering is that they're inattentive to that side of their body. The experiments at the Queensland Brain Institute prove that even healthy young brains don't work quite as well when their attention is overtaxed or directed elsewhere. Now, therapists know that retraining attention will be important for any patient with brain damage where their attention has been impaired. And that has implications for the thousands of people who will have a stroke during their lifetime. The Stroke Foundation says many people are not receiving optimal treatment, including clot-busting drugs within four and a half hours. In Australia, only 7% of patients who have that type of stroke are receiving that treatment. So if you've had a stroke, there's a 7 in 100 chance that you will receive a treatment that will really give you a good chance of returning home and being independent after your stroke. They say more public awareness is needed about the symptoms of stroke so people get to hospital in time. Meanwhile, the scientists will next investigate whether stimulating the brain using a magnetic pulse can become a routine part of treatment. 
So can we use that to perhaps, perhaps augment plasticity at, at critical times, like during stroke recovery? And the evidence is, is a bit mixed at the moment, but it's definitely a, a potential therapeutic uh, applications as well. And there's some tantalising evidence that uh, it can work. Um, what we want to do is to be very careful and make sure we understand all of the underlying basic processes first before we bring that treatment into the clinic. The risk of stroke increases with age, and Australia's population is ageing. The demand for appropriate treatment will only increase. The Stroke Foundation is absolutely delighted that researchers are focusing on finding new ways to improve the care for people who've had a stroke. We hear stories every day of people whose lives have been irreversibly changed after their stroke, and it provides hope uh, for those people and it also provides hope for us that we'll see people in the future after they've had a stroke not having the effects that they have today. Karen Berkman reporting and that's the program for this week. Don't forget you can see any of our stories again on our website or keep in touch on Twitter at 730QLD. Love to hear from you. Bye for now.